Welcome to Save Your Sanity, help for handling hijackles, those difficult, toxic, and often disturbing people in your life. I'm Dr. Roberta Shaler, the Relationship Help Doctor, and I'm here for you. You'll get the insight, skills, strategies, and support to stop tolerating verbal and emotional abuse, whether it's happening now or it happened to you in the past, maybe by a parent, partner, ex, relative, or even a co-worker. Time to take life back, to recover and to rediscover you, your values, dreams, desires, and realize them in healthy ways in healthy relationships. I'm so glad you're here. Hello, this is Dr. Roberta Shaler, the Relationship Help Doctor, and I'm the author of many books, including Escaping the Hijackle Trap, The Truth About Hijackles and Why They're Crazy Making. And today I want to just give you the audio recording of my small ebook called How to Spot a Hijackle. It's very important to know what to look for, what the red flags are. If you have a hijackle in your life, you need to know. Do you have someone in your life who is relentlessly difficult? Someone who is always finding fault, criticizing, or making you wrong? Someone whose mood changes at the flick of a switch or depending on who is in the room? Someone who leaves you feeling like you're going crazy? Recognizing that these are chronically difficult people is the first step. Often, though, we're loath to do that. We want to be compassionate, understanding, and patient, which in most cases, with most people, would be absolutely the best thing to do. And with these difficult folks, it's also the best thing to do with a big difference. Your awareness that they are highly unlikely to change. You, however, will do a lot of changing. In fact, you'll make yourself into a pretzel trying to make them happy or at least to not provoke them. And then nothing changes except you. If that is true in your relationship, you're likely with a hijackle. Hijackles make you question your sanity and second-guess yourself constantly. You can never relax around one. You can never be yourself. Keeping you off balance and on guard is their game, and they're very good at it. Spotting a hijackle begins with noting your reaction to certain people. You'll know you're near a hijackle because every time you even think of interacting with one, you get anxious. They want that. They want you to be uneasy because that makes them feel that they have power over you. That's food to a hijackle. They are constantly in a feeding frenzy for power, status, and control. When you are uneasy around them, hijackles have the upper hand. They make certain that you are never quite sure where you stand with them. Cat and mouse comes to mind. Bait and switch. No wonder you're anxious. Another of the hallmarks of hijackles that keeps you on edge is their need to win. No matter how small the victory, every victory counts to them. It is power over you and that in and of itself is a victory. You're uneasy, never sure what they will say or do, and not knowing if and when they will pounce. More anxiety, more uncertainty, more power for them. The main purpose of hijackle behavior is to win, and that means you lose. Chronically difficult people not only like to win, they have to win. Yes, to win, and in all circumstances and at all times. Yes, they will give you the illusion of agreeing with you, but only when it suits their purposes or their longer con game. Is this beginning to sound at all familiar to you? Are you beginning to see a pattern here, even though I've only begun to help you spot a hijackal? Once you see these patterns of behavior, you will finally recognize that what is going on is not about you, or more importantly, is not your fault. I'm Dr. Roberta Shaler. I coined the term hijackles to describe predictable patterns of behavior that drive you crazy, but you may not know why and how. That's because everything they do and say seems somewhat plausible. 
you can usually find a way to rationalize their behavior, justify it, or at least make an excuse for it. And if you've been around hijackos for a while, you're probably very well practiced at doing that too. Oh yes, it's true. You may have been raised by a hijackal yourself. In that case, everything they do seems somehow so normal, even though every cell in your body wants to rebel sometimes, you accept the behavior. You kind of take it lying down. I know all about that because I was raised by a hijackal mother and extremely passive-aggressive father. That's why I can so clearly help you to escape the hijackal trap but you have to be willing. When you are not feeling strong in your personal sense of self or conviction, who you are, what you value, what you deserve, what you will and will not tolerate, what your inalienable rights are, you will become entangled with a hijackal. And of course, if you were raised by a hijackal, that's even more likely. So here's my definition of a hijackal. Hijackos are people who hijack relationships for their own purposes while scavenging them for power, status, and control. Now, do you know one? If you ever feel hoodwinked, scapegoated, always wrong, always blamed, and powerless, you are likely in the grips of a hijackal. The good news is, once you recognize the hijackal behavior, you can immediately take steps to change it, and I can help you uncover these patterns, discover the causes, and do the work to recover from the emotional abuse they cause when they stay under your radar. Hijackals have an unrelenting need to win. You must lose, therefore everything is your fault. It is a huge step to realize that this is a behavior pattern, not an indictment of who you are. And it's not even your behavior pattern. However, you are participating in the behavior when you accept blame and fault. Wow! What if it's not you? It's not your fault. What a revelation! All this time that the hijackal spent blaming you made you think there was something terribly wrong with you. You might have been thinking, I'm not patient enough, I'm not kind enough, I'm not compassionate enough, I cannot seem to get the story straight or follow the plot. It always seems to be my fault that she or he is unhappy or unhealthy or unsatisfied. Oh, I should be more accepting, understanding, patient, thoughtful, considerate right? That's what's going on in your head. You blamed yourself for what was going on continuously sideways in the relationship, recognizing chronically difficult people. It's just not that easy. One thing is for sure with a hijackal, the problem and the battle is within them, not with you. Their game is to keep you thinking everything is your fault. It is not. Sure, after you've been with a hijackal for a while, you begin to build resentment, anger, and a sense of always being wrong. Sometimes then you react in ways you may not be proud of. That's on you, of course. But then you're later blamed for those reactions, seemingly eternally. You're continuously made wrong for those things by the hijackal, endlessly reminded of slips you may have made, and are doomed to more of the same until you agree with their low opinion of you. And even when you do agree that you are worthless, inconsiderate, selfish, and disposable, it's not enough. It's never enough. Hijackals not only throw you to the ground, they grind you into it with their heels. You cannot win. You can never win because a hijackal must win. If all this is sounding way too familiar, great. You're on the path to change, to standing up on your back legs and saying, no more. You are on the path to becoming assertive and strategic. That is essential to leveling the playing field when your partner, ex, parent, or co-worker is a hijackal. And really, the game analogy is an accurate one. When one person in a relationship has to win, it's game on forever. You're here. Great start. I can help you, and I want to. And I want to for two reasons. One, you deserve to breathe, to live fully, and to express who you are in life and relationships. You have difficulty doing this when you're constantly overshadowed by a looming hijackal. 
And number two, your children need to be protected from hijackal behavior and from chronically difficult people. You need to see it, believe it, understand it, and learn how to strategically encounter it for the best possible outcomes. You don't have time to waste because every day is disempowering and negatively affecting you, your sense of self, your family, your children, and most importantly, your well-being. Recognizing chronically difficult, relentlessly difficult people is the start, and then you must learn to be strategic. If you're recognizing this at all in your life, let's talk. You can have a brief free consultation with me. Just go to the website forrelationshiphelp.com and look at Get Help from Dr. Shaler. So here's some more insider information about spotting those hijackals and seeing them for who they really are behind the masks of civility they often show outside the home while saving their savage ways for those they supposedly love the most. So hijackals, who are they? Yes, they exist. They're not born, they emerge. They are covert, stealthy, territorial, and hungry. They'll rise up and snatch your sense of well-being in a heartbeat. They are always scavenging for their moment, their opportunity to grab what feeds them, a sense of power, status, and control. They are the kings and queens of the gotchas. You may have met a hijackal, been raised by or with one, run from one, or been run over by one. You may love one, live with one, or work with one. The thing is that they are difficult to recognize and are often appealing, enticing, and solicitous. Then some things change. Hijackals are people who shove you away yet demand that you stay so that they can shove you away again. It's a feeding cycle and it's you who ends up in the frenzy. If you are loving, living with, or working with a hijackal, you will immediately identify with this. They do everything to push you away while being absolutely afraid that you will leave. Why? Because you represent both safety and destruction at the same time. The hope for being loved and the fear of being left. It's crazy making. Unfortunately, hijackals are unaware of their negative effects on other people. And when you speak up and say, ouch, they can only tell you they didn't do anything. Everything is your fault and lies in your faulty perception of the situation. And that actually is the way they see you in life. They have to, because they cannot be at fault for anything themselves. If that sounds familiar, you may be face-to-face with a hijackal. Hijackals know in their hearts that being close to someone who loves them, protects them, supports them, and feeds them emotionally is a good thing. The problem for them is that their heads have a stronger, deeper, more demanding voice. Their heads tell them that unless they are perfect, never at fault, exerting power, gaining status, maintaining control, they can't survive. For them to be without those things to validate their existence, they feel and fear being invisible. They're fighting for their lives emotionally. Strangely enough, hijackals are not intentionally out to get you or lying in wait for a weak moment to pounce. They are both hurt and hurting, and when they feel most threatened, and that often doesn't take much, they emerge with the need to dominate, control, and manipulate. And contrary to what you might believe, they are not doing what they're doing on purpose. They simply don't know another way to create a sense of control in or over their lives and relationships. They don't know that these behaviors are not necessary for survival. They have never learned a different way. That may be hard to believe when you feel like you've just had your head ripped off and handed to you on a platter, or when you have shared your feelings and she or he stomped on them with the whine of, but what about me? Honestly, they don't know how to do it differently. You don't have to take it, but rather than reacting to the fury, frustration, friction, and frenzy they unleash, you can choose much more effective ways to deal with and manage those behaviors. That's why I've written Escaping the Hijackal Trap. I want to help you see that trap, recognize it for what it is, respond to it in healthy ways, and recover from it. 
And because hijackles come in many disguises, you'll need a field guide to be aware of the varieties, shades, nuances, and markings so you won't miss them. You need to know how to effectively manage different kinds of hijackle behavior. Each takes special insights and careful handling. Hijackles are not born, they're created. Their traits emerge over time and usually only in the depth and bandwidth required. When they find themselves in a loving, supportive, caring, reciprocal relationship, those traits die down and can even seem to be extinguished from lack of use. That's a huge gift to a a hijackle. Those traits, though, can often stay hidden, buried, or lurking for long periods of time. You'll likely never see them in the courting phase of your relationship, for instance. Those traits, too, can be masked by the hijackle or by you. Nature has a hand in all that, too. Mother Nature wants you to mate and does her best to obfuscate any questionable behaviors. So in those hormone-fueled first weeks or months of a new relationship, what might become a red flag sort of seems endearing and adorable at the outset. As you hear this, maybe you're remembering the uneasy feelings, maybe the uncertainty you felt when your partner did particular things or made cryptic remarks. And as you look back, you feel sucker punched because you say, how could I have missed it? I'm sure you remember. I certainly do. Here's an example from my life with a passive aggressive hijackal. I remember sitting on a bench in Granville Island Market in Vancouver, BC with my new love. I was fully aware of the joy of the quote unquote mating haze we were in. You know, the no matter what, this is going to be perfect stage where red flags are hidden behind fireworks and imaginings of your future together and where you ignore anything that doesn't fit your pattern of the perfection of the moment. He painted a word picture of something he had felt was very poor and unacceptable behavior on my part, something he knew I would be sensitive to from my past relationship. Then, just for good measure and dramatic effect, he added a few alligator tears to the portrait. In that moment, because it wasn't my first time at the rodeo, I recognized the passive-aggressive nature of what he had done and what he was doing. I was both angry and torn at the same time. I remember that internal struggle. It was at a time in my life when I was making major changes— Shifting from being a single mother responsible for the health and well-being of three kids to having an empty nest and setting out to become a full-time entrepreneur after staying in a job I despised to keep a financial stable environment for my kids. Now it was my time. Lots of change. I knew what he was up to and I just didn't want the drama of confrontation. I didn't have the energy for it at that moment. I remember apologizing for things I hadn't done or said. I may have even promised to never do it again. Oh, the joys of that love haze. And simultaneously, I knew I had just taught him that he could treat me that way, and I knowingly and willingly played along. Believe me, it got worse. If I had acted on my knowing rather than on my wanting, I would have saved myself an enormous amount of grief and so much time extricating myself. He was, and no doubt still is, a passive-aggressive, narcissistic hijackal. That was more than 20 years ago. Fortunately, I learned. Hijackals have often been so damaged by life experiences, especially in their formative years, that they have little idea of the swath they cut through the hearts, minds, and lives of others. Their needs for being right, for never being at fault, and for feeling that they have power and control at all times seriously impede their abilities and opportunities for developing empathy, managing emotions, and creating any sense of reciprocity or mutuality in relationships. You've likely heard the now common phrase, give until it hurts. It's become a way to make yourself feel like you're not good enough. Often, you can give and it will make a difference. Giving to a hijackal doesn't make a difference, though. You would simply be giving more and more, and you would never see a difference. You would be used and manipulated, worn out, worn down, exhausted. 
It feels wonderful to give when giving makes a difference. You can pour and pour and pour into a relationship with a hijackal and there will be no difference except that you are exhausted, downtrodden, and suffering, all the while not feeling good enough. Far too many people have the notion that loving and hurting are natural, organic companions. Far too many people have experienced that horrible coupling in their lives by being abused. There was no love in that. It is simply not true that loving enough requires hurting more. Those words, give until it hurts, have permeated our culture and become some kind of misguided goal, a thoughtlessly adopted maxim for too many people. Suggesting that you should give until it hurts suggests that you are only truly loving when you are in pain, and that's just not true, nor should you accept it as being true. If you think you might have taken that in, get some help to get it out. Men and women who have let the idea of giving until it hurts settle into their minds will be the very people who are willing, if unwitting, victims of hijackals. They believe they can give enough to fill the bottomless cup of a hijackal. It is not possible. Note. When you read Escaping the Hijackal Trap, be sure to study the chapter How to Recognize a Hijackal so you're never again caught unawares. And I'm going to give you now the 10 hallmarks of hijackals. One, they must win in all circumstances and preferably at all times. Two, they think in black and white terms. Three, they blame everyone for everything. Four, They are fault finders and criticizers. Five, they lack empathy. Six, they take no responsibility for their actions. Seven, they have a consistently negative turn of mind. Eight, their emotions are out of proportion to the events at hand. Nine, they keep things in chaos, ambiguity, and uncertainty. They say and do things that cause your jaw to drop in disbelief. As I mentioned earlier, you can learn so much more about these in the exclusive videos I have created in my Seeing the Cycles package. Make sure that you look for that at forrelationshiphelp.com. You must be able to see the cycles how a hijackal works in traits, patterns, and cycles. And that self-study program will give you deep insights into how all of this works. So I look forward to speaking with you soon or having you take one of my programs. I'm Dr. Roberta Shaler, the Relationship Help Doctor, and I offer urgent and ongoing care to relationships and crisis to people all over the world through the magic of the internet video. So please look all around at forrelationshiphelp.com or you can get there by going to hijackles.com. Talk soon. I'm so glad you spent this time with me today. I hope you heard something that touched your heart and empowered you to move forward. You can have the life and relationships that you most want and that begins with you within you today. I'm always here for you. Life can get better, and you heard that from me, the Relationship Help Doctor. I'm Roberta Shaler, and I work with clients throughout the world through video conferencing. We can talk. So learn more at 4RelationshipHelp.com, F-O-R, Relationship, H-E-L-P.com, or visit me on YouTube at 4RelationshipHelp. Join me for next week's show.